So if you haven't watched any of my Warsword videos thus far, that's completely fine. They're basically just the lore behind our main companion, Uber Dancebringer, but he's not going to be our main character in this final conclusion to the series. As I said, he's just going to be a side character. Our main character is going to be the Skaven Merchant introduced in the last episode. And some would argue the Skaven Merchant is evil as his goal is to cover the land in rats. He wants to dominate all other factions. However, I do think it's all a matter of perspective. And even though I don't know too much about Warhammer lore, what I do know is even the factions that appear to be good and right just like the humans, the elves, there is a certain level of corruption that could be going on at the higher levels. And the Skaven Merchant believes that all the other races are just beyond saving. The world would be much simpler if it was just inhabited by fellow rats. Word has gotten out of a great power rising from Skaven Blight, so every faction is going to be sounding their drums of war, you could say. We've cranked up all the settings to the highest, mainly campaign AI, so all factions are going to be bringing out their elite troops. Because every faction has gotten wind of what we're up to, they're all very angry with us. And what I'm hoping this is going to do is when we get our first castle this is going to make everyone want to attack us in my previous playthroughs if i had a garrison of like 100 to 200 units the ai would not attack and i'm really hoping this is going to up the difficulty in that regard and all right without further ado our journey begins in skaven blight we're playing as the skaven merchant who does have 10 in mana control magic power and magic control the reason why he's able to sustain such high magic levels is we're going to be sacrificing all troops that we come across that are not skaven also being that he is a merchant he does have 10 in trade skill the companion we're bringing along on this journey and who we've developed thus far in the previous episodes is Uber Dancebringer. In the previous episode, he also acquired some runic armor, but since it's been a few years, the runes have deteriorated, so he's not going to be getting the advanced ignore pain and the other runes. His Warhammer runes did also deteriorate, but it's still much better than the basic runic Warhammer. He's also got this really decent helmet that he picked up from a dungeon, and in the last episode, he acquired this grenade launcher, and he's got five can rounds, effectively making him a master engineer companion. And all right, one final thing before we get going, the Skaven have two magic schools to choose from. Rune magic makes it so siege towers are built 5% faster per magic level, but there's not that many siege tower attacks in this game, at least not that I've come across so far. Plague magic makes it so villages are looted 3% faster per magic level. This is going to be a lot more useful in the early game, and I was looking over the plague magic skills, they just seem better. And alright, we were traveling along looking for some easy enemies to take out so we could acquire a basic mount when we ran into 16 chaos zealots. With one shot of his cannon, Uber Dancebringer took out 12 with the chaos zealots and we let them beat down the rest of them so we could take them prisoner unfortunately we don't have any prisoner management skill yet so we're not able to capture prisoners we were however able to loot all their items and we sold them off at a nearby town for quite a nice profit as we do have 14 trade actually because we have 10 trade in our main character so we're getting quite a nice profit for buying and selling goods at the time we bought a couple giant rats that are actually really quick and they have high maneuver they're really decent mounts they just don't have that much hp which is completely fine and we gave one over to uber dance bringer we actually can't ride one ourselves yet because we don't have any in riding. That should change after this battle though as we only need 30 XP to level up and I think we actually get XP off of just winning the battle but even if we don't there we go I gotta level up. We're gonna let Uber Dancebringer fire at will now. And he's probably going to kill us. Nope. Good shot, Uber Dancebringer. And all right, with that level up, we put one point into riding. So our main character now can ride one of the giant rats. And we headed back to the nearby town to solve all the Zella armor and weapons. It was on the morning of day three when we ran into this pretty massive pirate press gang. They have 51 units, but they have seven Skaven prisoners that we could rescue. The only issue here is it is fairly foggy. We can't really see what's going on. And it looks like Uber Dancebringer completely missed his first shot, which is not ideal. His second one though did connect and he killed 35 troops. It looks like a lot of them are actually running already. There was one brave soul who decided not to rout and we let Uber Dancebringer just knock him out. And we were able to capture him as well as rescue all the prisoners these guys had and we hired them to our party. Because there was only two people in our party when we did the battle, there's 55 items on the ground. And the loot's not the greatest, but we did get three flintlock pistols off of it. I decided to sell off all the loot, including the guns. I was going to possibly keep a gun for a companion we might pick up later or one for myself but the guns weren't all that good anyways so we're probably gonna find better guns and if we want to use magic we can't actually use a gun on our main character with the money we got from that battle in the previous battles we were able to pick up two abilities the first one cloud of corruption is an aoe damage ability and don't worry we are done abusing these poor chaos zealots there we're just a few right outside of town and we needed just a bit more money to be able to afford a unit that was inside the town after selling off their gear and selling off the two prisoners we got almost the perfect amount and we picked up this plague warlock i wanted to do a bit of a limit 
summit test with our new mercenary plague warlock and hit up a dungeon. On the way to the dungeon though I could not resist raiding this beastman village. We didn't get great loot from the village but what we did get we brought back to Skaven Blight, sold off, just so we had room for any potential loot that we'd acquire in the dungeon we were about to do. Unfortunately as we were trying out a tier 10 dungeon which by the way I don't think we would have been able to do this anyways but as we were attempting it the game crashed and I did a bit of testing and I found out it's the warlock that was crashing the game. As long as I didn't bring him into the dungeon then the game would not crash. Okay so one of the abilities we picked up madness turns somebody on our side for like 30 seconds I think it is and okay now he just went hostile or yeah he turned back. The ability is not that good because the unit doesn't really fight for us that much. I guess you could just kind of consider it like a stun. This ability Vermintide is really good though. I just summoned 18 of these rats. Oh and here we go. I found the chest. So people in the comment section were saying there is a chest in every dungeon. I don't believe that's the case. I would have to see it to believe it. I don't know how you prove that but Whoa, by the way, this thing is insanely long. 250 reach. Never seen a weapon that long. But yeah, I mean, maybe chests can like spawn in the wall or something. I don't know. But I just refuse to believe that there is a chest in every level. Because yeah, like this level is not even that big. And I spent like 10 minutes looking for it one time. If we do manage to progress through this long dungeon, it actually is Vermintide cast you like right there. And we summon some rats who are going to charge in. And Uber Dance Springer, you're not going to fire. Because, yeah, when he does fire, he does have a tendency to knock out our own troops. We're just going to go in there. As long as he has a tank line in front of him, he's fine. He can do a lot of work. Oh, and our rats were actually summoned below us, by the way. They can be summoned, like, in weird places. But yeah, they got someone way down there and they're doing some fighting, which is good. I think they're winning. But yeah, I'm going to put extra attention into looking in every single corner of the map. And I really, really doubt that I'm going to find chests on every level. And like, I'm going to be very attentive to detail here. Like, I'm talking like, I'm going to be looking in places that, you know. Oh, there's a chest back there, actually. Okay, well, maybe I just haven't been as creative with my looking. It's another really long halberd and a long bow as well, by the way. And very nice. There's a chest in here. Maybe you guys are right in the comment section. This is a really good sword, by the way. We got a Crack shadow bow, not a bad bow. Some okay legs and then some arrows. Oh, this is a bad room. Okay. Vermintide, save us. Nice. Did I get hit? Yeah, I got hit for 21 damage. I could run to the end right now. Come on. Oh, I got knocked out. Uber Dance Bringer actually got knocked out there too. So if I didn't get hit by that arrow, we'd probably have been screwed anyways. But yeah, bad RNG on that room. It was a long dungeon anyways, so we probably weren't going to clear it out. And we need some better troops, by the way. The whole point of us even doing that dungeon was I thought we would be able to bring our Warlock in there and he'd be able to summon double the amount of troops basically with us. But yeah, for now, we're just going to go around to these Skaven villages and we're going to try to recruit as many Skaven basic units as we can. Oh, we're going to get our Briggs broken or what did i just say our brigs broken our legs are gonna get broken nice and slow fortunately for these guys though we did summon a massive group of bodyguards to prevent them from breaking our brigs nice and slow but yeah that can happen where you get ambushed in a village when you're recruiting at night something you usually don't do but i have confidence which i shouldn't have had confidence there we have no hp and also by the way you may notice there's this cattle herd that keeps following us and we got this from the village we got a fat amount of cattle actually from looting that thing so we're gonna start slaughtering those and selling off the meats we don't want to sell it all off because yeah every time you do sell off the meat it does go down in price by the way i wonder if salt here is a good price 290 for a large bag seems pretty good let's grab as much salt as we can and let's go over to other skaven town and we'll see if we can make a profit the other town was fairly close and we're able to sell off the large bag for a little bit of a profit not much we slaughtered the rest of the cattle and we're gonna sell it off to the magic vendor at the other town there's a couple more abilities we can get i want to try out this one curse of the horn one which kills an enemy if they don't have high enough iron flesh and it will summon a unit in their place and all right after doing that transaction at the skaven town of Maragliano, we hit up a bunch of the skaven villages on our way to karak Izor. this is where we were going to do our first siege and i'm actually really surprised they did not sally out here as we only had 42 units okay the plan here is we're gonna charge in with all these slaves right now we can have uber just fire at will i don't think you'll hit them hopefully nice you got a bunch of kills i could actually use my cloud of corruption as well oh yep that's what i like to i like to see the lag and i like to hear the level up but yeah let's use cloud of corruption winds of magic four so we shouldn't fail it 
And oh yeah, we killed a bunch. There's only 39 left. Let's see how many, whoa, we just got 10 level ups, I think, just now off of that. I don't know what to put points into, by the way. Like I'm thinking we're just gonna spam points into charisma just so we can get a ton of troops. So yeah, let's actually just do that. We're just gonna spam points in charisma. So the only troops that we could not kill with Cloud of Corruption were these Dwarf Rune Priests. They're immune to magic and evidently they're immune to the damage our summon units do. Me and our Plague Warlock summoned 550 troops and that was not enough to kill a single Dwarf Rune Priest. I just don't think their weapons had high enough damage to penetrate the Rune Priest armor. And it's not necessarily that these units are bad. Like after that battle, I think we had like three units up total and these Dwarf Scouts ran us down. The units we summoned from Vermintide were able to easily mop them up. So yeah, it's less of these units sucking and more of the Rune Priest just being that good. And all right, we went back home, banked a few things. We actually got a pretty nice Dwarf chest piece from that previous battle. We gave our units some time to heal up and headed back to the Dwarf Castle where there was only eight troops left. A bunch of our units did upgrade into these Skaven skirmishers who do have guns and their guns should be able to pierce the rune priest armor and yeah we've killed i think three so far there's also a way we can draw these guys out oh no that's not what i wanted necessarily okay we're okay yeah, we just killed another one just now. I was gonna have Uber Dancebringer use his grenade launcher thing, but he is bugged currently, so I'm just gonna keep doing this. There we go, another one down. There's only two left, I think. Another one down. And okay. We got 12 renown for that, as well as some really nice dwarven boots. A couple of nice dwarven boots and uh, helmets. And all right, quite a few days have passed. The dwarves actually ended up retaking Karak Izor. They didn't leave that many troops there, so we were easily able to go back and retake it. We now find ourselves pretty deep into beastman territory. I was going to try to take on the town of Camp of Skulls. However, there is a lord there protecting it with 200 troops, and he seems very powerful. Instead of attacking that, we're going to try to attack the castle of Herdstone. And thankfully, these guys did not sally out which is great because yeah our composition is mostly range units i have absolutely no idea what's going on by the way but yeah as soon as our units spread out into formation we just started owning them like you can see on the left we're just getting so many kills and here we go so we can see that yeah they got a bunch of units on top of those rocks and they're just getting sniped out i'm gonna have our infantry charge in and use them as a distraction so i can get a cloud of corruption off because yeah, our units are not able to shoot at them in a while that's a lot of units clumped up and okay we killed 162 so far there's only 68 so we got quite a bit with that cloud of corruption and okay i brought uber dance bringer up here and he just fired a shot which did kill quite a few of these guys actually oh there we go another nice hit i'm surprised actually that he's connecting with these guys i remember attacking this thing a long time ago in a previous series and the engineers would not hit the enemies they kept hitting the walls but it looks like uber is pretty accurate here and yeah there's only 15 enemies left and all right we were finally victorious we lost 14 units but we took out 230 got a bunch of renown for that bunch of items left on the ground not really anything that's too amazing we did gather them all though and yeah we will defer it and we will plunder it for 4400 we're gonna hope the units that we deferred by the way are skaven they are not skaven unfortunately there's some pretty nice units units here though and I think what we're gonna do is just leave these as the garrison just so we have something to work with I think it's gonna be too hard if we have to disband every deferred castle's garrison whenever we take out a new castle and alrighty after taking herdstone we headed back to the ratlands and sold off all the gear we just acquired from that siege plus we went back to raid a beastman village and just got a little bit of loot from that we sold that off at scaven blight as well and while we were doing that the dwarves ended up taking karak Izor back from us which actually ended up working out pretty well because our court got relocated to herdstone because our court is here we can now hire a patrol we chose the big one we told the patrol to reinforce herdstone's garrison but it had bigger and better plans to run down this beastman war herd which had a ton of prisoners small side note and kind of a funny game mechanic after telling the patrol to transfer their troops to herdstone the name of the patrol changed to transfer to herdstone but yeah we helped out the patrol much to the dismay of the skaven merchant he hated fighting along these smelly beasts riding smellier beasts he refused to employ any of them into his company and wanted desperately to sacrifice all these recruited prisoners, but Uber Dancebringer convinced him to spare the prisoners so the patrol could pick them up and bring them back to reinforce Herdstone's garrison. And yeah, if you don't pick up rescued prisoners at the end of the battle, they will go to other units who participated in the 
battle. The patrol was not done hunting down beastmen though, and this party they hunted down had 13 prisoner units, which we allowed them to add to their party. We again told the patrol to reinforce Hearthstone's garrison, and apparently third try is a charm, they were able to make it into the garrison without aggroing onto any nearby beastmen parties, probably because it was nighttime and they couldn't see very far. After reinforcing Hearthstone's garrison, we headed back to Skaven lands, and on the way we ran into the entire Bretonian army. They did pursue us for a bit, but we were easily able to outmaneuver them as Uber Dancebringer does have 10 in Pathfinding. Back at Skaven Blight, we ran into arguably the best companion in Warsword, aside from Uber Dancebringer, of course, and the Skaven Merchant refused to recruit him. We did, however, end up finding our first Skaven companion at the other nearby Skaven town. It was one of the many 300 gold companions in the game, and these guys start out with a bunch of charisma so you can easily get their leadership up and they make good vassals. We spent a few more days in Skaven lands grabbing recruits, and on the way back to Beastman lands, we stopped back at Skaven Blight. It had been about three days at this point, and standing where Thrud was standing was another Skaven companion. This guy was a thousand gold and he specialized in pole arms. He's got 218 skill in it. Thankfully, we had still held on to this Chaos Heavy Halberd that he would be able to use once he got his strength up to 14, which would be five levels from now. He did only start at level seven though, so he'd be fairly easy to level up. As we were heading back through Beastman lands, we ran across the entire Bretonian army yet again. This time, they were sieging the Beastman town camp of Skulls. The Beastman didn't even try to respond to that though, as most of their lords were too busy fighting the High Elves who were also invading them. And since most of their lords were busy, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to try to take on the town of Greathorn. They did have 400 units, and I didn't realize this at the time, but the leader of the Beastmen was here, and he didn't have that many troops. I guess he just got knocked out recently, and he was here at Greathorn just trying to replenish his troops. And okay, as usual, when attacking these Beastmen towns and castles, we have really no idea what's going on, except for we know that there's a bunch of troops on top of that hill thing up there. Be a shame if someone were to cast a Cloud of Corruption right in the middle of all those units. I did drop a Cloud of Corruption on their main area, and what's interesting actually about this whole siege layout is I moved our units up. The range units on the right over here are actually sniping at these guys in the back. It's hard to see because of all the green mist that is emitted whenever these guys shoot. But yeah, you can see like all their units are clumped up over here, and our gunmen are able to just snipe at them, which is pretty cool. I think we might be able to just do the siege by stacking all of our range units over here, and that's actually what we might do. And okay, that actually pissed them off to the point where they're charging out now. We gotta get some... Okay, that Minotaur got destroyed and I think they're actually stuck on the ladder by the way. Some of them are able to get out but for the most part they're just kind of stuck there and yeah there's only 46 left. And right we were successful. We did lose 17 rats. We did take out 373 units though and we captured Gorthor the Beast Lord who is the ruler of the Beastmen. We're definitely gonna take this guy prisoner. He's probably gonna sell for quite a bit and they had a bunch of prisoners that we can rescue and I would really like to rescue these guys and then put them in the garrison because there's actually some really nice units in here. Unfortunately Unfortunately, the Skaven Merchant will not take any of these troops into his party, not even for a second. So yeah, we're just going to capture the prisoners and we're going to sacrifice the rest of these units, I guess. As far as loot, we got a bunch of Beastman chest pieces, a Beastman headpiece. We're also going to plunder it for 6,500. And because we now own a town, we were able to sell off all the Beastman gear to the goods vendor for almost 10k gold. Our ownership of Greyhorn did not last long. The Beastman Lords came back over and retook it. That whole event was not a waste though, as we made one of our rat companions a lord and gave him over the town as well as the nearby villages and he really liked that. We have a really good relation with him now. So a bit later he joins up with us on the field. He's got 92 troops. That's all about to change though because at Hellspawn they have 344 prisoners. I'm not going to show too much more of this battle or really any of the rest of the battles with the Beastmen as we pretty much roll over them at this point. The only battle that wasn't a complete stomp was our siege defense at Dark Shrine, which I made into a separate video. A link to that will be in the top right as well as it'll be in the description and I'll probably put it in the comment section. The battle for Dark Shrine was what pretty much solidified the Beastmen defeat as most of their lords were wounded at this point and even though the campaign AI was on good we were able to blitz through the rest of their territory and take it pretty easily. The beastmen did try to put up a final defense of Brion but their lords had basically no troops so it was really easy to take and the high elves actually did come back with a pretty massive army to take camp of skulls we could not defend that and speaking of the elves the dark elves actually came over to take great horn from us and they brought with them a pretty massive army of around 1500 troops. Our rat vassal did have 280 troops though most of which were prisoners that we rescued from hellspawn 
and since I didn't take any of those, he just picked up most of them. Our combined forces were not enough to save Greathorn though, which is unfortunate. It probably would have been a good video. One of the main issues, aside from the fact we're outnumbered around four to one here, was that the enemy had tons of casters. Like you can see right here, four casters are spamming abilities. And even if like we killed off this wave of enemies, they would get more casters later on. But yeah, I had our Gisales in the back and then I had our infantry up in the front just kind of distracting and we were doing okay, but we needed to be absolutely just mowing them down. And I didn't see a way to position our units so that we could get a better angle at them. The layout of this town is overall just pretty level. It doesn't feel like it's all that defensible. Because the Rat Lord we had with us had so many troops, we were able to start just blitzing through enemy castles. Up until this point where he actually escaped the enemy High Elf army, he made it into this castle, but as the High Elves were chasing the Skaven merchants, our Rat Vassal thought he could escape, but since he had so many troops, he was really weighed down, and the enemy High Elves were able to eventually chase him down, and they completely obliterated him. A few days later, he rejoins us, and we fatten him right back up as we take a few castles and they have a ton of prisoners in them. We then use him and his troops to steamroll through Britonia and I want to give a special shout out to Gisaruk's castle for being I think the biggest cloud of corruption kill I've gotten thus far at around 150 kills. We didn't need cloud of corruption here as we were able to put our Gisales up on this hill and they were able to snipe down at these guys and it would only have been a matter of time before we could have taken them out. There's two more Bretonian sieges I want to talk about. The first one being Muslan for its really cool layout. It spawns a bunch of troops in the center here on this bridge but then on the right and on the left there's archers lining these walls. Our AoE spells are able to reach over the river though and we do have this new Master Warlock stat that we bought for around 16k and the main thing with this is it increases the radius on all of our spells by 20%. One of the final Bretonian sieges we do is at Caron and aesthetically this town looks amazing. Like you got a bunch of these towers in the background that make it look impenetrable but they don't actually do anything and the enemy is just forced to line up on the walls and we're able to just AoE them down or like you could just have your range units just spray them down. So yeah aesthetically this town is a 10 out of 10. In practicality, this town's a 1 out of 10. Marienburg, on the other hand, which I believe was originally a Sigmar town, this town was much more defensible. We got a bunch of archers up here on these towers, which I do AoE down. I do also have mixed feelings about this, like using our AoE magic does feel like we're kind of trivializing such a cool siege attack. But the way I kind of justify it is Warband AI is really bad, and like our range units would not be able to shoot at these guys if they have closer infantry, like down here in the middle or like on this boat over here. They might have some units that our range units would be locked walking onto since they are closer. From my understanding, the AI will prioritize attacking a target that's closer even if they don't have line of sight on it, which I guess that's just like a limitation of the engine. It's how the AI works in all mods. And yeah, like if we didn't have AOE magic, these elven towns and castles would be really hard to attack. And like here, I drop a cloud of corruption on a group of their archers that you can't even see. If we had archery here, by the way, we could take these guys out. Or if we were specced into firearms, we could just sit behind our infantry and snipe them out. That plague I just dropped, by the way, I think killed like 100. It's just really hard to see what's going on because they're really clumped up in the back. Also, I want to give a shout out to this elven town. We send our infantry into this meat grinder. And they just provide a distraction so I can AOE down. I don't actually know how many archers were up here. I think it was in the hundreds though. And all right, I just want to do a bit of an overview on what we've accomplished thus far before we do a few changes. We are teal and basically we just blitz through a lot of Sigmar's territory. They didn't really put up any defense. Bretonia didn't as well and neither did the elves. I don't know what they were all doing. They were off doing their own thing, I guess. If I scroll back down to where we started, in the Beastman lands, you can pretty much see that we still own most of the stuff that we captured as we were expanding our territory to the northwest. And part of it has to do with the fact that the campaign AI is pretty slow in terms of their ability to react to the blitz strategy. And like we can see here with the Siege of Tor and like since I put 10 points in Engineer on my main character, it gives us a plus four bonus. So we're at 14 Engineer, which is actually overkill. If you just have 12 Engineer, every Siege Tower and Ladder attack will be instant. At least that's how it works in this mod. It's different for every mod. But yeah, I just want to go over this Siege of Tor and like really quick as I feel like it was I guess interesting to say the least I noticed we were actually able to climb up this mountain like the rats we are and we were able to snipe at these guys unfortunately we weren't able to hit their archers because their archers were kind of further away than their main troops I guess and so yeah this was another pretty good showcase in terms of how bad Warband's AI is as our Gisales were not able to really lock onto their archers and we actually lost a lot of Gisales here before I just decided you know what I'm just going to take it really slow and use my AoE magic to just slowly will these guys guys down. And yeah, as you guys have noticed, I've been kind of crapping on the game CJI and mainly that's because I've been just non-stop doing sieges for the past, I want to say like week, I've just been trying to grind out this game. I spent the majority of my days in siege battles getting basically no content and it's all felt pretty pointless. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it doesn't really feel like we're getting any progression. In order to fix that and in order to salvage my YouTube channel, we're adding in a new win condition here, which is clear a tier 10 dungeon. And the idea here is if we can clear a tier 10 dungeon, there's a legendary item in 
inside of it that we can use to basically take over the world and actually have an idea of what the item would be and I think it would make for a really cool future playthrough but I don't want to spoil it but for the sake of this playthrough we're just going to say that we win the game if we clear a tier 10 dungeon. We are restricted to only using Skaven units and we can use Uber Dance Bringer. The Skaven units we're going to bring in are this Rat Ogre which is fairly tanky. It's got 95 HP, a lot of power strike. I don't know what weapon it's using but I think overall it's going to be the most tanky Skaven unit even though it doesn't have a shield that might actually be a problem. The other Skaven unit we're bringing in is this Rattling Gunner. It's a Skaven special unit. You can only acquire this from I believe prisoner stacks. Some lords will have these units in their army but you can't get these the normal way. So the Rattling Gunner it's actually a pretty cool unit and I showcased its Gatling Gun in a previous video. It can fire I think six times before needing to reload and it does a bit of spray damage. And we also had Uber Dance Bringer in the dungeon using his Master Engineer cannon attack type of thing. We gave it a few solid attempts and we actually did end up clearing out this room. We got some tier 10 dungeon loot from this chest which we had absolutely no use for and I'm pretty sure we had no use for any of the tier 10 dungeon loot. At this point we had like 300k in our treasury and yeah I think when you're doing tier 10 dungeons you're not going to need any of the tier 10 dungeon loot aside from the final item which the final item in a tier 10 dungeon is no better than the final item from a tier 1 dungeon and for the most part from what I've seen you can just buy those items from a special weapons vendor and a lot of them are really cheap they're like 5k. I think it definitely needs a rework it needs to give you more reward for clearing out the entire dungeon but yeah after a few attempts uber dance bringer was like dude i cleared out a tier 10 dungeon already i have the item like you can just have the item i just want to go retire and so he gave the item to the skaven merchant and the skaven merchant took over the entire world the end